Hello, Madge Trissa. There you are. You have no idea how dual streaming works, but you're entertained that apparently someone has been mowing the lawn. Uh, yep. That looks about right. <laughs> uh, I- don't worry, I can- I can really mow the lawn. A mystical force in this area stops you. Oh. Well, alright. Perfect. Envir- oh, wow. <laughs> Environment. <laughs> but I- oh, I can find rocks. Yep, uh, I'm just using the- I'm using a different tool, which is hoeing the ground, instead of mining the ground. <laughs> that does make more sense. Yes, so I can just make things flats for us to build on. Hello, Zoe. Are... Oh, Hello, Wolfie. Oh, Wolf, Wolf, wait, Wolfie, why are you awake? <laughs> My friend, it is, um... Many times right now. Why are you awake? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Interesting, this multi-stream system. Honestly, I love the multi- I love that multi-stream is a thing, because you can see all of the shenanigans. For both <laughs> of us, be in real time. Rivalry? I oh, mean... Which window gets the most comments? Uh, maybe. But we should probably, you definitely. know, tell people what's going on. Yeah, we should. Sorry, <laughs> I, was so, I was so enamored of hitting the ground with a, with a pickaxe. Uh, <laughs> hello, new people. What I am going to be doing is interviewing Adam about this game, Norse Things, and attempting not to die, which is so far going pretty well. Yep. Uh... And then uh, trying to get this raven to stop following me. True. Um, so actually, this is like the raw footage for what will be a YouTube interview. Uh, and Adam has very kindly agreed to be my first interviewee ever. Woohoo! So maybe a little scuffed, a little patchy, but it's also going to be incredibly earnest. And I think in terms of which window gets the most comments, we are... I think we can just tell each other about comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And talk about things. But, exactly. Yeah. So, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of my folks over in my chat. Uh, to anyone who is watching over on Saranel's chat, hello. Uh, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Adam. Uh, I run the Twitch channel Ludo History, which is the, obviously why you're seeing my point of view down here. Uh, I have a master's degree in Viking and Medieval Norse Studies uh, from the University of Iceland. I also almost have a degree in Cultural Heritage from Simmons University. Uh, and I've been a Twitch streamer for about two and a half years continuous now, uh, specializing in historical games, uh, broadly defined as whatever I stream is a historical game. And then, uh, the adaptation of history, uh, in all media, but especially in video games. Uh, so I have an article that came out earlier this summer, uh, on that very topic in Games and Culture, so... It's an, good to see you all. Uh, I can- I- I'll look into getting into comics eventually, Zoe. Uh, <laughs> oh, comics? I'm- I wish. Uh, I'm there. <laughs> you're there? Incredible. Yeah, I am teaching comics in first year English. Oh, that's- that's amazing. Which is pretty fun. They're not medieval comics, but that's the next step. That's okay. Uh, uh based off what I've heard from some of my other folks, uh, there's a couple of medieval comics, comics that are real bad uh, that have come out recently yeah. from like Dark Horse. Oh really? Yeah, they had one. They have one on uh, the Tain, so the story of Cahalan, and yeah. it is bad. Oh no! Ah! Stop it! Hello. Stop it, Railings. You're not welcome. Also, we should we should get you actual stuff. Uh. Things I can chop down trees with? Exactly. Are, are people shooting arrows at us? Uh, not right now. But uh, okay. if they are, I can shoot arrows back at them. Oh, fantastic. And I should introduce myself. I oh, yes. am Saranel. I am a medievalist as well. Well, <laughs> I usually play Crusader Kings 3 and Loop Hero. Um, and I know very little about medieval Norse things, 
Viking things, and actually, as it happens, Valheim. So I'm excited to bask in some knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm ha excited to bask in running away from trolls. <laughs> so relaxing. And I can helpfully uh, do nothing to these wave this raven. You should talk to that raven. Also, you should not get hit by these trees. They will kill you. Oh, shit. Okay. Gee, good lord. I Not chopped fast, Raven. I chopped down one tree and I killed four. Uh, that's what we call efficiency. <laughs> and yet the pickaxe does nothing. And uh, yeah, so Adam and I, I think we met at that Rings of Power panel, right? Uh, yeah, oh, I... Is that? Uh, that was the first time I think we've actually worked together. Uh, but like, I heard you talk at IMC over the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we were in contact a tiny bit before then. Uh, but yeah, I think we first like actually worked together like month, month and a half ago. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> the ultimate bug. It is. This little grayling is nimble but ill-fated. Uh, yes, they try so hard. Uh... I should ask if tools decay in this game. They do decay, but you can repair them for free. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so you'll just, at any crafting bench, you're able to repair them uh, for totally free. Which Sorry. makes it a little bit more convenient, to be honest. <laughs> all right, so there's all, all right. the... Oh, also it's already nighttime. Uh, heck. Is this when we freeze to death? Uh, a little bit. Your stamina reduction is reduced at night. Uh, so we should probably at least build a campfire so we can see. I found some planks of wood. Wait, where are you? Uh, next to the crafting table. Let me run away from this bird. Oh, we're, we're committed to that bird bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think the bird is committed to me. That's fair. He's back. Okay. He's just going to tell you a lot of basic things, namely, uh, I sequence broke really badly by giving you that uh, pickaxe. Okay. <laughs> like, he did just tell me I can craft things, so... Oh, good. Um, and so, yeah, chat, this is going to be... Oh, I feel cold. This oh, no. is going to be a combination of some more formal questions. Also, any questions that you have, if either of us see them, we will answer them. Yes. Um, and also, I guess running around and staying warm at night. Uh huh. Well, probably goal number one should be build a house uh, so that we can, you know, skip nighttime. Because nighttime is okay. bad and no one can see anything. Least of all, chat. Takes to craft, uh, you, you need some stone. You need stone Ooh. and here. If you don't have enough stone, uh, I do. So just. I do, I, I do. Great. I have an axe. Great. You I also need to make a hammer with some stone, is the other big thing you need. Hammer. Oh, I need more. You need more stone? Stone and wood. Okay. Here, I got you covered. Boom. Oh, but I just flung it backwards, but that's fine. And there's some more wood. Wood. That should be enough to cover you. Rocks. Can I do it? I can. Hooray. Ooh, um, nice. I may have just made an oh. excessive hammer, but that's fine. Also, hello, Karabachi. Uh, and people were asking, is this hyper-realistic Minecraft? More accurately, this is Viking Age Minecraft. Ooh, hang on, hang on. You're apparently very quiet in my stream, so oh, I'm no. gonna turn your side of things up a bit. Perfect. And I can also turn Thank things up on... Thank you letting me know, Wolfie. We'll so I'm gonna turn up desktop and then turn down my volume in the game. Perfect. Uh, are we going to raise a small North style hall in this stream? Uh, we might. Honestly, though, a lot of the good crafting uh, requires significantly later game materials. So we're going to see what we can do. Because uh, right, 
you can eventually get like diamond the like dragon scale shingles that are very stereotypical of the Viking style. But you need significantly later materials than we have. So we'll see how that goes. So Wolfie, how did Adam sound there? We oui. Much better. Excellent. Glad Perfect. By the way, also look up. The skybox in this oh. game is one of the best skyboxes. That's incredible. Yeah. So chat, the premise of this game, um, if you don't know, is that we are in the 10th world, you know, famously nine worlds in Norse mythology. We are in world 10, which is Valheim, uh, and we have been sent here by Odin to murder his enemies. And so what we are seeing above us are the roots of Yggdrasil that we are disconnected from and thrown underneath. It is really pretty. It is very pretty. Oh, I do feel cold though. So you can't. You have to stay close to the fire. Uh, if you want to stay warm, get yeah. Better clothes. Okay. Cold, cold doesn't really do a lot. It just slows the rate of stamina recovery. Oh, okay. I see. So it's not. It's not like it's going to kill you. It's just vaguely inconvenient. So this isn't one of those survival games. <laughs> Correct. Now the tr knocking down trees on your face will kill you. Uh, getting hit by a troll will kill you. Okay. Uh, lighting yourself on fire is a thing you can do and will kill you. That's, that's reasonable. Honestly, it's fair. Uh, Dusty Dog, officially speaking, I am the de the guest, but, uh, the other stream here is, uh, Sarah Nell Jackson, who is going to be interviewing me, uh, for what will eventually be on her channel, a proper YouTube interview, and hopefully the first of a series. Oh. So, I think you've introduced yourself, so maybe I'll do that post-talk in the... for the YouTube version. Perfect. And here, we can just jump into the first question. Let's I have do it. Alright, so... <laughs> as I'm sure we can guess from that extremely concise description of the secret 10th world in the Norse afterlife. This is not at all your first rodeo when it comes to streaming medieval Norse games. You have played the first God of War yep. and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is where one of my regulars knows you from. Oh. And you'll have a God of War 2 series coming up next right week. Now, later this month. And yeah, by the time this goes up on YouTube, it'll have been up for a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. So if I were to say, hey, Adam, there's a new video game coming out. It involves Vikings. Firstly, what would you guess that game would be like just based on that information. Uh, all the games you've played. I mean, the first thing I do is probably swear uh, and then go <laughs> another one. Because I do not have time for this. There are too many of them. Oh, I'm going to drop a tree on your head. Watch out. Uh, uh, lived? You lived? I lived. Uh, but yeah, yes. realistically, uh, I've seen broadly that there's kind of two main type, like, categories of game that involve the Vikings, uh, and I think the same two types as all historical games, to be honest. The first one is, you know, it's going to be some sort of action RPG thing where you are going to be ultra-violent, uh, coded masculine, go forth, do violence, and probably celebrate that. <laughs> it's questionable, but, you know, that's where the genre goes, right? That's where Assassin's Creed and God of War both go, even though in one case you're technically not Norse. But your son is, so that counts. Uh, oh, is that the God of War thing? Yes. Uh, the other main type is going to be some sort of like grand strategy that attempts to put the vikings into some very broad social context right that's going to be like crusader kings uh to some extent even something like expeditions viking though that's more of an srpg uh or crpg however you want to describe genre it's fake uh but you know something that takes a much higher level view about them instead of being stories about a raider having a very heroic journey, uh, or anti-heroic journey as the case may be, you're going to have some larger group of people that are trying to negotiate uh, the settlements and drama that is being alive in the 9th to 11th centuries. Right. There's a specific feature of 
what being alive in the 9th to 11th centuries tends to involve. I'm thinking my most of my experience with these games has been Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. Which involves what feels to me a very familiar beat of uh, arriving in England as Vikings, yep. pointing and laughing and saying silly Christians, and then... Doing a settlement. lot of violence. Doing a lot of... Quite satisfying violence, yes. Yes. Uh, honestly, that is the main thing, because uh, to immediately tangent to whatever our actual sources for this period, right, we're actually looking at a lot of much later sources as our main things. So we are looking at a group of texts called the Icelandic Sagas, which are largely written down uh, in the 13th and 14th centuries, but sometimes composed a little bit earlier. Uh, and they are kind of collectively uh, histories based on oral traditions that go back to the Viking Age, but that are uh, about early Icelanders uh, and ancestors of the 13th century political order. And these kind of treating their lives as very heroic, very individualized, and very fraught with political violence, because that's the main tope, uh, trope of this period is a frankly egregious amount of political violence all the time. Uh, right? It's called like a feuding culture, is how like Jesse Bayok uh, and uh, William Ian e. Miller call it. So it's people engaging in this sort of back and forth of killing to negotiate all sorts of disputes, and it is wild right it is right. a wild society to have to live in <laughs> all right i'm non-interview question yes oh, i was running very slowly can you not run at your base uh no you should be able to why can i only kind of run were you out of stamina oh i am i am out of stamina i thought i was carrying too much wood okay so, we have these two broad versions of Norse-flavored games. Yeah. How consistent is Valheim with one or the other? Does it buck the trend in some way? Is it pretty pretty easy to slot into one or the other? It, it doesn't fit super neatly into one or the other, but of the two, it very much fits closer into the first one. Uh, right, in that, you know, we are embodying a single person who... Supposedly, you know, died gloriously doing um, presumably very good violence, and then we were sent off into this other world in order to continue doing that. Right. So this is less of a punishment than it might seem. It's more you're going to the other place where you do lots of violence specifically for Odin rather than a... Exactly. Uh, oh man, I thought I'd be in Valhalla killing people, but instead... Uh, instead, we are being sent to this other place uh, to kill people. Yeah. It's basically and the same. Cut, yeah, uh, the game doesn't seem to phrase it as uh, a punishment, given that uh, one of Odin's ravens is the one who's like telling us what the heck's going on. So it seems like right. very much a we were sent on mission rather than uh, we are being punished for being insufficiently good at violence. Right. Oh, by the way, I found the location of the first boss, so whenever we want to kill uh, it, we can. Ooh. Oh, do we have a... we have a map. We do have a map. Uh, hopefully it marks everything I've discovered for you. You know, I don't think it does. Huh. Is there, up in the top, is there a little, like, horned helmet guy? No. I only see, I think, the summoning, or the place where we land. Oh boy, yeah. Uh, so if you head, in, uh, like, northwest, that's where I am right now. Uh, and that's okay. going to lead to, uh, the next boss. Which, honestly, we are ready to take on. Uh, just by virtue of what I brought into the game. Because, uh, Chad, I did cheat. I've been grinding for the last four hours uh, in order to, in a different world, in order to bring a whole bunch of resources in. 
because the early game of this is tedious, and that's not really what we're here to see. All hello. Right, heading northwest. Many trees. I also oh. like that. Oh, hello. I like that some trees are too hard to chop down. Yes, it's great. Um, I think they're still too hard to, to chop down. I think I need copper in order to chop down. Yeah. Even yeah. my slightly better axe uh, is not gonna be enough. Oh yeah, uh, also before we can fight the first boss, we need to kill a few deer. Oh, right. Because that is the requirement to do the first boss, is collect two deer heads and then um, throw them on the altar to this vaguely larger deer. Oh, you do have a better axe. I do have better axe. I can give you... I've got a, almost enough materials for to make another one. I also have a spear. Uh, can we... Can we do animal husbandry in this game? You can. Uh, I think it's either mushrooms or carrots. Uh, if you like walk up to boars and then slowly, like crouching, and then you throw them at their feet, they will follow you. And if you have a fence, uh, you can put them in a fen in an enclosure, and then they are yours. Oh, there's a deer. Uh, Apparently. And I kind of enjoy that Valheim doesn't quite fit into either of those types of Norse or Viking flavored games exactly, because according to uh, the Iron Gate CEO, Richard Svensson, who I think started this just as a one-man operation, uh, he chose to do Vikings because Vikings were popular. Yeah. And he's still right. He's still right, uh, to my mild <laughs> distress. Uh, it has been quite a few years, and he is... I mean, I guess not that many. I think it's been two years since this came out. Uh, he still is right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it should take... How long were zombies a thing? Ten years? Um, they're kind of still a thing. Let's... I mean, uh, there was an announcement for a game literally this week that was, uh, Left for Dead, but Medieval. So they're oh, kind of no. they're kind of still a thing. The game actually doesn't look terrible. Uh, it just still is a thing. <laughs> so you will still be busy. Yep, uh, we will never oh. be free of this. Uh, I, we live in a hell of our own creation. Hey, I I'm a late medievalist. That's true. I have I have. Relatively slim pickings to choose from. True. Well, well you have I to. Guess all of medieval fantasy, unfortunately. But... <laughs> exactly. Right. You have to deal with all of the games that say that they're medieval and then include guns. Which I guess True. is is fourteenth century of very like uh, late fourteenth century of them, but. Yes. You know. Uh. Or right something like I don't know chivalry two. Or the or, weird ass, I, the weird terrible Robin Hood games. Uh, those are all your problem. Terrible Robin Hood games. I have to admit though, because I'm I'm very much about the medieval vibes. So yeah. something like, I would say even something like Bloodborne, which is not medieval but still kind of medieval. I, and, exactly. I I totally get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I've. Oh no, that's not you. That's this large bird. Hello, large bird. Where have you gone? Can I see you on the map? No. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way oh, to change that. Can... Hang on. You can highlight visible to other players. Yeah. I should do that. How do I do that? Uh, I think map. Right visible. To... There we go. Now you should be... Ah. Now, or now I should be visible to you. Yes. Can I... Can I swim? Uh, for a little while. If you're not a stamina, you will drown. All right. Oh yeah. And I know uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of well technically about the word Viking, <laughs> uh, which I am again thinking of uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where Eivor says, "Let's go a Viking," and you're like, "Oh, that's 
She's being technical about it. That's um, it's also incorrect. She's being technical, but this makes her more wrong. <laughs> Tell me more. So is Viking uh, an accurate term for what we're doing right now? So Viking in Old Norse has two meanings, right? There's the feminine noun Viking, and then there's the masculine noun Vikingur. Uh, the feminine noun Viking means a voyage, uh, specifically a voyage for the sake of a raid. Okay. A Vikingur is a person on that voyage, so a uh, marauder is probably the best translation. Yeah. Saying that there is a verb to say, let's go a Viking, is just incorrect. That is not a word in Old Norse. There is no word, uh, verb, Vikinga. Right, so that would be kind of like Eivor saying, let's go Googling. Exactly. It's more exciting. Exactly. That's pretty much exactly what it is. Uh, so, a very common English phenomenon, but uh, bad Old Norse. Oh, interesting. What is th This is a very niche question. Yes. Uh, that I did not prepare you for, but is there, <laughs> is there any, uh, like, is there a kind of linguistic word formation that tends to happen more often in, in Old Norse? Um, not too much. Uh, Old Norse and modern Icelandic will uh, love a construction of like a t, of, and then a verb. So a two and then another two and then a verb. Uh, that kind of serves the same purpose. So right, uh, to pay for something, you'll s it's like til of panta, I believe. Don't quote me on that. My Icelandic's rusty. Uh, I would not even be able to begin to try to quote you on that. <laughs> but yeah, so it like uses a preposition and then an infinitive marker and then the infinitive form of the verb. Uh, so they like oh. double stack their twos, which is a very fun way of like marking intention. That is fun, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, there's another deer. Let's let's go kill more deer. Okay. I theoretically should sneak up I on the deer so that I don't I don't have to I chase them. But I did get a trophy. Oh good. You have one trophy? I think I have one yeah. trophy too, so that gives us enough trophies to go fight the boss whenever we want. Uh but we should get you uh, at least a flint axe first. Because as it turns out, flint is better than... Oh, wait. No. This, when will he stop? Okay, hang on. I have found a snack. Okay. Hooray. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, I've got enough stuff to... Uh, get you. I've got enough stuff to get you a flint axe here. Let's grab those. Uh, and then the other thing you probably want is a shield, huh? Oh, would that be helpful? That's probably helpful. Blocking stuff is good in this game. Okay. And uh, the <laughs> deer. I've mostly been blocking with my elbow, so. The, the deer... I can see how a shield would be helpful. Yeah, the deer shoots lightning, uh, you probably want to be able to block the lightning. Right. It's just... This is a... This is a deer who's not so ominous in the original myth, right? Uh, yeah. It is a being from the original myth, which not all the bosses in this game are. But, mm -hmm. for the most part, the deer sits on in the branches of Yggdrasil, munching, and that's it. That's the sum total of mentions in the mythology of Aegthyrtir. <laughs> okay. Sits in the giant oak and or ash tree uh, and eats the leaves. That's it. Now he's gone bad. Now he's gone bad. Right. In the gritty reboot of Norse mythology <laughs> because it was insufficiently gritty already. <laughs> <laughs> Norse mythology. Too wholesome. Um, ooh. Oh, started. All right. Let's see if I can make you a shield. What do, do I need? Do I have a sword? I don't have a sword. We cannot make swords yet. It is. Wow. Disappointing. Uh, do you, do you have any leather scraps right now? I think. Uh, they're from boars. 
leather scraps, leather pants. Yes, I have one leather scrap. You have one leather scrap. Then I can make you a round shield like what I've got. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. How do I drop it? Uh, if you just left, uh, left click it. There we go. Huh. Uh, wood shield. Oh, do I have a real sword? No, I don't. I've, most of multiple people in my chat have real swords. It's pretty great. Really? This is what you need to use that new Twitch feature for. True. Oh, oh hey, uh, so Madrasrissa noted that uh, the my least favorite feature is all over this video game. Oh yeah. If we look in the center of our spawn point. It's a Galdrastafir. Specifically, it's a Vegvisir, which uh, translates to basically Wayfinder. This is attested yeah. in a manuscript from the 19th century, and nowhere before oh, then. Oh no, <laughs> not the 19th century. It is at least an Icelandic manuscript, so it's not like it's just the Victorians be being Victorian. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is in fact 19th century and not medieval. Damn it. And also uh, is derived from early modern uh, Solomonic grimoire traditions, and not pre-Christian ones. That is kind of fun. There's but... there's an almost identical uh, staff in Indonesian uh, traditions, I believe. I think we f found that that there's almost identical symbols. It's either in Malaysian or Indonesian uh, manuscripts. That is almost identical, and it's quite distressing. It's read something ominous. Long ages past, he wore a crown beneath a blood red sky, and now naught is left of all he was, but his spirit cannot die. Amazing. Kind of rhyming? I don't know about that. Uh, it's a little bit rhyming. It's fine. It's fine, I, I guess. Feelings about that at all? That's the same as in uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where yeah, the... rhyming couplets threateningly at each other. It's very funny. It's fine. I do always enjoy when they do that. Cause... Greater than rhyme. Exactly. Oh, hello. I'm not sneaky enough. Oh, I, I, that was my bad. Uh, you were sneaky enough, I just kind of barreled fast and spooked it. <laughs> Wolfie has ten swords. Damn. Wolfie has a lot of swords. Uh, we're living up to the 1066. Bell, if you give me your uh, deer trophy as well. Uh, oh, yeah. I will summon the boss. We can summon the boss and um, we'll skip the early game. We should eventually build houses and beds, though, uh, before we get too much farther. Right. But we can Where do that after we kill the boss. If you, die? Uh, if you don't have a, your bed set, it'll, you'll just respawn at the baby, sir, we just left. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> like that, I just lobbed a deer head. Just out. yeeted at me. Oh, do I have a sword? No. Or a shield, rather. Yes. I believe I threw the shield at your face and you absorbed oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to absorb a shield. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, just right-click to block. If you block with good timing, uh, you will uh, get a parry, which will stagger most enemies. It will not stagger bosses, but uh, it's useful anyway. <laughs> Good for the not dying thing. Exactly. Well, not dying again. Let's get equipped uh, then, and then uh, who's ready? I I'm equipped. Also, eat food if you haven't eaten food recently uh, for the max oh. health and stamina. How do I eat food? Uh, just right click on the food you want to eat. Okay. I'll, I'll draw aggro on the giant boss for the moment. Hey, get over here. No, don't don't get over here like that. I would stay back for a little bit, uh, just because you're low on health. Okay. Until your health recharges. I will just keep drawing aggro. Oh heck. That's yeah. He's so mad. He, he's so mad and so lightning -y. <laughs> He has so much lightning. Also, he will try and drop trees on you, because uh, he does break trees as he wails on them. He does like 2,000 damage to a tree. 
<laughs> it's he oh. started out just eating leaves. Oh, it is funny though. If he drops them on himself, uh, he does hurt himself. Oh no. All right. And you say his name, Aethir. Yes. So uh, it's missing a bit. It should be Aethirnir, but yes. Oh, um, watch out for falling branch. There we go. He caught me trying to log. He's so metal. Oh, he's got a lighting bomb. Oof. Yeah. No, turn around. I would love to play a game where the legendary creatures are not constantly hostile. True. Uh, that's a good environmental thing to talk about, because, oh is. boy, the mythological creatures in this game are all extremely hostile and mostly made up. <laughs> Implying that mythological creatures are not definitionally made up. Oh, you know. Uh, Just wanna... One, no, no. Oh, but he's gonna bomb, I'd run away. There we go. Oh, well, game liked. That's exciting. <laughs> The tree is even too hard for him to knock over. Yeah. Beech tree's OP. The, the, the birch is apparently a very good tree. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if- oh, my health- my health looks alright. Yeah, it looks fine. It looks like you're like 90% health. That's fine. Let's go in there and kill him. Okay. Ow. <laughs> oh, I just dropped- You're at 1 HP. Yo, he's at 1 HP. Go, I believe. Yes. Woohoo. The most damage he did to me was dropping a tree on my face. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and the most important thing. Ginormous trophy. God, this was such a better spawn point. Uh, than in my, like, grinding world. I had to build a boat before I could go hunt, uh... Even, I could even get to Aethir. Oh. Because you can't, you, you can build one boat without needing uh, bronze. It's just, yeah. it's very bad and very slow and everyone hates it. <laughs> and they were just like, no, uh, the world has uh, been created in such a way that you must. And I was just like, oh. But do I really so have there to? There you were, on a sad boat. Exactly. Uh, the wind turned against me, and so I had to literally wiggle the rudder uh, in order to get across. Oh, no. that's, that's happened to me in real life. So that's fun. also happened to me in real life. It's not fun. Let me take a look over at chat. Okay. Really? Chat, none of you saw me miss that deal four times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go let's go hang up our first trophy. Oh, we do, oh. Ooh. And then we hang the trophy here and it does stuff. And then And we can run and jump. It exactly. It makes us Bless way better us. at running and jumping. So we activate that, and it gives us five minutes uh, of good running. Five minutes? Hang on. Exactly. You can do it once every 20 minutes, so you have five minutes of good running and 15 minutes of really bad running. <laughs> All right. Let's clear out some oh, ground. Oh, hey, wait. What are you doing here? Sir, sir, sir. <laughs> sir, 
sir, please. <laughs> we are trying to have an interview over here, not get attacked by great dwarfs. Which are supposedly supposed to, like, souls of previous inhabitants of this place that did iniquitous things and then got buried and stuff. Ooh. There's a whole lore about them. In reality, they're tree people. Tree people. I mean, they drop they drop resin and wood when you kill them. So, oh, as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, they are in fact a tree. Well, now I feel bad. I research trees. Oh yeah, that that is. I mean, it hasn't stopped it didn't stop us from uh cutting down all of these other trees. So. It's true. Also. I am working up, uh, watch out, that was okay. very close to your head. Uh, but yeah, we should probably build a house, what do you say? I've got a hundred wood just like hit, sitting here, so we can build a house whenever. Perfect. Let's, let's knock down all of this stuff and then uh, we'll see. This? We're saying goodbye to this hobble? I mean, we need this. We can get rid of this previous person's house to make our own better house. That's true. Especially since the I. The one who lives on the Pacific West Coast, I feel slightly attacked by that statement, but. <laughs> uh, but I do need to set up another crafting table, which is irritating. And there's a bunch of wood there. So in theory, if you use the uh, if you use the hammer, by anything. the way, um, no. Uh, no, it's impossible to beat this game without killing lots of things. Okay. Because right, you have to. The whole point is to kill the four big bosses. Yeah. In order to kill Aether, you have to kill Deer. If you want to not die against Aether, you're probably also going to need to kill Deer or Boars. Uh, uh, right. Then in order to make better armor, you need uh, skeleton bits, which uh, are, you know, dropped from by skeletons. Spoilers. Oh, right. So, you need those bone fragments. And then once... Uh, you also need those to go into skeleton lairs in order to take a uh, locate... Uh, the location of the next of the second boss. And you need to take care of the bosses to progress through the world. Exactly. Ah, you can enter other places early, but you're not going to be able to do required progression stuff without uh, without taking care of the bosses. So, like, uh, right. Aether drops hard antler, which is what we use to make the pickaxe. I just uh, use my I, I use my previous kills of Aether to get us set up for that. Right. Oh, I scuffed that. Uh, and then the second boss, I believe, drops. I'm not 100 percent sure on this because uh, it's been a long time since I killed them. Uh, but I believe drops the stuff we need in order to. Uh, like survive extreme temperatures, which we need to go to the later areas. Okay. But we also guaranteed need uh, boats in order to get to the second boss, which means making bronze, which means just a lot of mining. And since things will attack you while you're mining, you end up doing a lot of violence. Speaking of doing a lot of violence, Mr. Grey Dwarf, what are you here for? Violence. Goodbye. <laughs> you could eat another bite. Oh, I guess I should eat something. Yeah, keeping your food up is important because otherwise you have 25 health and 50 stamina and that's bad. Oh, that's grim, yeah. Alright, let's eat. It's actually pretty atrocious. Uh, also, I think that clears us a bunch of land, which is awesome. What's I remember that? you compared starting out to Terra Nullius, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Especially if these little guys running around are kind of tree people. Yeah, um, the, mm, yes. 
I have lots of thoughts on that. Because it's <laughs> it's functionally a Terra Nullius, even though the game technically does a lot to say, no, it's definitely not. There are definitely loads of people that were here before you. They just happen to all be dead. <laughs> right. Right? Like, there's these abandoned houses. I was like, great, there's houses, but they're abandoned. Or... Right. Uh, there's these runestones that previous people carved, which is great, except that, um, they're also gone. Interesting. So it puts me in mind of, I mean, this is getting a little English, but the origin story for England from Jeffrey of Monmouth, where yeah. conveniently the only previous inhabitants were giants. Exactly. Who, one guy, Cornwall. Cornwall throws off a cliff and then has Cornwall named after him. Perfect. Definitely not a fake story, we promise. Jeffrey of Ponmouth? Making stuff up? Mr. No. Reliable? <laughs> <laughs> he would never. No. Alright. I guess I should contribute to building. How do I build something? Uh, you go into number your hammer, and then you can select oh, uh, what, you do, what you want to build stuff with. I think I am first going to light up this area because i enjoy like knowing what i'm doing and it's not daytime fair oh i'm out of resin well i lit up a little bit of the area it honestly may be easier in some uh, it's almost daytime the sky's getting lighter because then if i can just like flatten out this chunk that would be awesome and then we can set up a little teeny tiny hall and a couple of beds Oh good, now it's daytime. I know because it lagged. <laughs> I get that when the world saves, yeah. It sometimes does it for me just for fun. Uh, it always does it when the world saves, and then sometimes it does it elsewhere. Anyway. I Oh, I can repair this pile of logs? Hmm. I don't know that you need to repair the pile of logs. TBH. Also, if you if you if you middle click on things, uh, you'll just delete them from and get all their resource costs back. Oh, nice. So that's literally what the piles of things are for. Uh, it's just a way to store fifty materials at a time. <laughs> you can make just piles. Them. You can make piles of rocks, and you can make piles of wood, and then they just like exist uh, until you blow them up. I'm just laying out some floor plans, because we might as well. Alright. So, while I'm being completely unhelpful here, yeah, um, it puts me in mind of a review of this game I was reading on IGN, where I think it's David Genyo suggests that it's somewhat ironic that one of the most hostile and deadly periods in human history is the focus of a game that emphasizes working together and cooperation. Well... I'm following you. You're cooperative. Uh huh. As a historian, what's your take on that take? I think that's the the worst take I've heard in a hot second, and today has been a doozy for bad I was takes. Gonna say. Today has been a real doozy for bad takes regarding Norse history, uh, and that still is a like an egregiously bad take. Uh, so. I guess because violence takes some degree of cooperation on at least one side. Exactly. Right, loads of people have to cooperate, uh, but right, Norse society uh, very much is one where either you work together or you die. Uh, admittedly, it's largely working together uh, in a raiding context to make sure other people die, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, but right, uh, just as a proof of that, let's just recount the uh, amount of work that goes into making a boat. You have to have multiple people cutting down trees, because it's going to take more than one tree uh, in order to make a boat of any size. So you're going to have multiple people working together to identify and carve, uh, chop down and transport probably up to like a dozen trees. In some cases, quite a lot of trees being used here. Uh, And then you have to have people uh, that are then honing the, those trees, 
They might- that might be the same person, that might not be. I am out of wood, do you mind throwing me a stack? Or, or there's more over here, I can just grab them. Do I? Let me see. Uh, I got- I just got 50. Okay. Yep. <laughs> then, so, uh- lifestyle isn't exactly a great man narrative. No. Uh, right, Biz, we're just getting started. Right, we had the trees. And that's fine. Yeah. But then, you have to uh, have people that went out in the boats to get seals, to uh, hunt seals, because your ropes are probably made out of seals. They're either made out of hemp, or they're made out of seal skin. We've found both uh, in burial contexts. Or in boat burial contexts, I should say. So, we know they're associated with boat building. Uh, right. And there, I think there also have descriptions in saga sources. So, uh, people had to go ahead and get those, and then tra transform those. And then different people had to uh, make the sale. That's probably going to be largely uh, women doing that labor. Right? Uh, so you'll have... Uh, exactly. You've got people making textiles. And then you you have the actual people that are like manning the boat uh, and farmers that are contributing supplies to it. Uh, potentially messengers that are assembling a cr helping assemble a crew. You've got the crew themselves, which is uh, in some cases over a hundred people. Right. right. We're looking at potentially hundred. 100 plus people involved in uh, actually being on the boat. And they yeah, all have to get along. Ebatron in chat saying, as a self-proclaimed historian, I'm on the side of the bad take. Oh, oh dear. How bad, how bad do the takes have to get before we get off of that, the side of the bad take? Now, well... Because, I mean, we I could just we keep getting like worse. Three, but I will say... Evatron is is of the maximum incest, cannibalize the Pope kind of playthrough. I mean, all right. <laughs> Look. So depending whether that falls as, where that falls on the bad take scale relative to no Vikings cooperated, they were too busy killing other people. I... This would mean, if true, they were too busy killing each other, which would sort of nullify. They were pretty the busy problem. killing each other too, but... Uh... <laughs> There you go, Evatron. They are, are diverse in their targets. Mm. Everyone is fair game. Themselves, other people, uh, even third groups of people, everyone's fair game. <laughs> well, there's a, that's a nice start to a house. I'm afraid we're going to rapidly need more materials, but... Some stuff, I think. We should be good to start making roof. Um, I just threw 45 wood on the ground. Beautiful. And we need some furniture of some kind, right? Yeah, the most important thing is beds. Alright. Furniture, oh, I threw it on my wood. Okay, back to helpful. Back to being helpful and getting stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah. right, it's very much a popular conception that there, that this is an uncooperative, ultra-violent period, but that's that's a trope that uh, every medievalist ever has had to deal with. And True. we pretty much just roll our eyes and move on at this point. Okay. Uh, no one watching my stream saw me struggle <laughs> through a door for that long. Uh, don't worry, doors are hard. <laughs> doors, doors in this game are particularly hard. I'm, like, no joke. I even oh, I am now I'm out of workbench. Well, that's weird. Why am I out of workbench? Oh, you can hit the bird and it goes away. No, it doesn't. Nope, it just it just like poofs and then goes. Why did you try and hit me? <laughs> One day you will kill the bird. Someday. 
and then we'll be sent to I don't know what would be what would be a real version of hell for Vikings, Stardew Valley? Uh it's yeah. Got to be nice to people uh, see playing. the problem with Stardew Valley is like every other day when they're not on a raid. <laughs> right? If you're not the warrior elite, your life is just like a shitty Stardew Valley. True. Okay. And where is there Norse lore on where your shitty Stardew Valley folks go when they die? Uh, not clear. Oh. I'll be honest. It's not clear because there are no fewer than um, three identified afterlives. Potentially four. Uh, right. And they're all confusing. <laughs> and how they actually interact with each other is open to debate. So three afterlives, nine realms. Yeah, because there's hell, which is supposedly where the iniquitous and those who die of uh, old age go. Why those are put in the same group, I am uncertain. Uh... The iniquitous and those who die of old age. Exactly. If you die of sickness, uh, are an evil person, or uh, just are old, uh, you go to hell, and you'll be in hell forever. If you uh, die at sea, you might go to Rounds Hall, the uh, Yachtin of the Sea. It has a hall, maybe? That maybe people who die in shipwrecks go to? Um, very yep. Uh, lots of people die in shipwrecks. It's not that. It's not that uncommon. I guess that makes sense. They yeah. are. They are a maritime society. Shipwrecks are and in the North Sea. Not a good place to like be based on boats. True. A lot of storms out there. Hey, do you have any? Do you have any wood for everybody? Uh, yeah. I just picked up 30. Uh, there you go. Thank you. And then you have uh, Vanaheim, which is Freya's hall, which might be uh, another afterlife? That is not clear what makes it... It's not clear what makes that different from Valhot, which is, you know, the well-known afterlife. Uh, because the poem Grimnismal, which is one of our oldest Norse poems, uh, says that Freya chooses half of the slain each day, and Odin chooses the other half. Which implies that Freya gets the first pick as to who goes to Vanaheim. Or, no, uh, sorry, not Vanaheim. It's in Vanaheim, the name of the hall is Folkvanger. Okay, so that's consistent with being fairly arbitrarily selected for the afterlife. Correct. Whichever one it may happen to be. Hang on a sec, I need to repair something. Mm. It's, um, it seems by all accounts that I can figure out to be uh, of basically completely arbitrary. And <laughs> like has very little good about it. It's not even clear that, like, this is how it worked, uh, and how much of this is 13th century authors, uh, particularly Snorri Sturluson, uh, just being like, I don't know what's happening, uh, here, try stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it might just be Snorri Sturluson panicked and had no idea what's happening, and so just, like, That's made up fair. stuff. I need some kind of explanation. Which, to be fair, um, I would hardly approve of on the... Grounds. Oh, I'm out of wood. I need only a little bit more wood to finish our glorious house. Oh, we have a cannibalize Odin cake in chat. I like that. We have a cannibalize Odin? Odin. Well, I mean, I guess. Yeah. And as a historian of incredible repute for the last 30 minutes, my next take yes. is that Vikings only ate meat and only drank the blood of their enemies. Uh, if you trust Paul the Deacon, then yes. Though technically, uh, that's talking about the Lombards, not the Vikings, but that didn't stop the Victorians, and so why should it stop us? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think it's Paul the Deacon in his uh, Historia Longobardi or Longobardorum, uh, yeah. uh, just says that the like that's where the drinking out of skulls comes from. It's literally from that. Oh 
nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like wholesome domesticity doesn't have a huge role in. In. Uh, at least in our partial conception of it. Uh, right, to be honest, I think there's a lot more wholesome domesticity than we give it credit for. Uh, right, it just, it doesn't show up in what people imagine. No, come on, please line up. Uh, right, I and... just fell off the building. Okay. Where do you repair things? Uh, at any workbench. Oh. Okay, Let's just there. line these up then. Boom. And boom. Up. Oh. And then... Oh no, I just threw roof. it out. Come on. Roof, I believe. There we go. It's perfect. Our house is perfect. Help. I was just on fire. Yep. Uh, and I think. Uh oh! In my chat, uh, I... Zoe asked, "Do assigned female at birth people uh go to hell when they die?" Uh, our poems don't really care about what happens to women, uh... which is bad. But there is a uh, extremely little detail. Uh. Sometimes they get buried, sometimes they come back as ghosts, uh, sometimes they are Christian and get so mad uh, at people being lazy about transferring them to a church to be buried that they persuade God to let them come back as a ghost to do the cooking for people. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's the story that happened. Oh no. That, that is an <laughs> actual sequence from Erbegir Saga. I, I love it. Uh, uh, so this is kind of more of the same for a lot of uh, people assigned female at birth in medieval sources, where sometimes it's not that bad, but mostly by omission. Yeah. We just don't know what happens. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, that goes all the way to Ragnarok, right? One of the most common questions I get uh, is, like, what happens to Freya at Ragnarok? And it's like, uh huh. The sources literally forgot to mention what happened to Freya after Ragnarok. That's interesting, because she seems like she would count as fairly significant. That's fairly significant, you'd think. Uh, same with Frigg. Uh, you know, Odin's wife, the queen of the gods, wisest, uh, able to see the future, wisest of, like, all beings. Yeah. Uh, no source mentions what happens to her during or after Ragnarok. It's real bad. Uh... Yeah, it's very in the category of disappointed, but not surprised. Yeah. For a lot of these sources. I remember there's one source I read, uh, not Norse. I'm actually not sure where it was from. It was a translated poem by, I think, a monk who was like, I heard that two women were in love, but that can't be right, because how would they even do it? Ha ha ha. Oof. Like, oh, man. Here, here we are again. Familiar. <laughs> here. So, yep. Don't you hate when we are, oh, uh, accidentally, like nothing has changed in the last 1200 years? 1200 years, yeah. Like, oh, that's. And that can be fun, just seeing how much is consistent, but in that particular case, it's like, okay. Yeah. Also, I may have built this door a little bit too short. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we can fix this. I'm glad it wasn't just sheer ineptitude. We can fix this. Boom. I have fixed the problem. Nice. But can I still not? Uh, we're, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the doormat out once I finish the flooring here cuz the flooring is important. I mean, having it be dirt is probably more correct, but we are fancy here. And we can afford... We have done enough environmental damage to afford wood in Florence. Oh, I need to eat food. I also need to eat food. I also need to hail hydrate, so, uh, drink. Feathers. What do we do with feathers? Make arrows out with them. 
Ah, nice. Yeah. You can make nicer arrows, including fire arrows. Uh, eventually. If you have flint and wood and uh, feathers. Interesting. You can make arrows without any of those, with just wood. Uh, which makes me wonder how that works. But... <laughs> I guess like we don't need them to fly very well. It's true. Extra funny considering all the queer nuns. It does make you wonder, like, does that make it somewhat easier historically? Also, I've straight up had that conversation. My favorite bad moment in college is a classmate mentioned Hildegard of Bingen had one of the first recorded descriptions of censored female pleasure thing. And uh -huh. one dude was like, but she entered the nunnery as a kid, right? I don't know when she would have had the opportunity. Oops. Magus is true, that's incredible. <laughs> Every single woman in the room looked at each other like, mm. Mm. Did we tell him? Nah. And that is the question. <laughs> nah, I think at that point you just accept that he's just going to be roasted on the internet forever and don't fix that problem. <laughs> Also, uh, I should probably not set all of these to be like that, because I just realized that I made all of the flooring, uh, despite then also wanting to set uh, a fire pit where the wood oh. f on the wooden floor. I realized that was probably a bad idea. I just decided that was probably a bad idea. Excuse me. I I got rid of the wooden floor. It's now. It's now merely. Me oh, well, that's don't stand don't stand in my way. That may be somewhat off field. Fair, that's fair. And we have a hole in the roof for the smoke. Exactly. I planned this all out. And a bed, and another bed. All right. I read something which seems kind of surprising to me at this point in the game, but. Uh, Jessica Barnes at Game Rant was speculating about expansions of this game that depart from Norse mythology. And I would be curious for your take on what would a, kind of riffing on that Bloodborne being extremely medieval. Of course. What, <laughs> what traits would a non-Norse flavored expansion have that would still keep it kind of consistent with Norse mythology, Norse, you know, Logic, Viking, uh, honestly, or what have you. Yeah. Not a game that isn't Norse at all, but kind of has that resonance involved. I'm not. I'm not super sure to be honest. Uh, right, because I haven't seen a lot of those games that try and do the big genre shifts, like do them well. Mm. Right. So, like the clearest example I can think was like Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Where its DLC was like East Asian, right? And it was not particularly good. Okay. Uh, so you know, uh, it's just a lot of ways. If you want the design to be impactful, uh, you need it to be culturally specific. True. And if it's culturally specific, you can't really change what the setting is. Like that's. Kind of a logical contradiction. So, in a lot of ways, right, this game works because it's only so, like, vaguely Norse that I think it could get away with that a little bit more. <laughs> but it, I think, still would run that risk. Yeah, there is always, oh. in that case, you're using another aesthetic, and, mm. you know, you can't have two things next to each other that seem unrelated, I guess. Exactly. Uh, Madrasursa points out, do, do you remember uh, the peacocks in Amazon's hit MMORPG New World uh, and their generic uh, Chinese-themed area? And uh, the question mark is, I, or the correct response is, we try not to. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, right, a lot of cases... Uh, if you're just changing the flavor, it's, I just don't think it works super well. So I don't know. There's so much left for this game to explore in a Norse context that I don't know why you'd want them to move to be a different culture besides your tired, your board of the Vikings, which you know, fair and reasonable. 
More games. Always more games. But also, yeah, yeah. just make make a different video game. I hate to say make make my job worse, but I do need to keep getting content somehow. <laughs> as much as the games industry needs to chill, we do get paid theoretically for playing games that come out. And therefore we sure. need the content mill to continue. Early medieval English stuff? Yeah, I guess maybe get, Wolfie points out maybe go to Old English because it's extremely similar. Uh, mm. My response is that it's so similar that most people forget that there's a difference. True. Right, like... You, how did you feel about the difference such as it was in Assassin's Creed Valhalla? I mean, I think they did the difference reasonably well, but I'd like them to go even farther on being like, yeah, these are, like... They're way more similar than they are distinct. That was actually, I think, in some ways, the strongest point of the game. Uh, I think they could have done a little bit more, but right, identifying that a lot of the same political struggles are just all over the place in both of them. Yeah. And then being like, oh yeah, well, our cor yeah, there's theoretically a religious difference, but that's not actually that impactful. Uh, and there's a lot of shared goals, uh, shared cultural features, somewhat shared language that let that work. They still wound up leaning into right exceptional Vikings, but uh, because you need exceptional protagonists. But largely, I think they did a good job, especially with like background characters, of making sure that everything kind of all is of a singular aesthetic. Right? I had much bigger issues with class than culture differences in that game. Oh. Uh, right, I like... this isn't what the interview is supposed to be about, but... <laughs> but right, like, the bandits in Assassin's Creed Valhalla all are, like, spooky pagans who wear, like, human faces grafted to their faces. Right. And that's weird, because largely, um, they're supposed to be poor people. Yeah. Right, there are poor people who it. opportunistically use elite squabbles to do a little bit of banditry. Yeah. And the Picts obviously have that same problem because they're like naked snow people. Uh, very Conan. <laughs> but, yeah, by and large, right, the Norse English difference uh, is way less pronounced than the uh, rich, important character English and the these are cannon fodder English. Right, true. And that does remind me of the... My own We Try Not To Remember It in that game, which is the... The whole Halloween sequence. Well, the entire... What, you mean, uh... Halloween featuring the Mari Lewid in, uh... And pagan cultural things in 9th century Gloucestershire? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I did, in fact... a game where, where people, you know, were traveling around, meeting new people, communicating seamlessly with them, but... Also, literally... Incomprehensible and ridiculous. Uh, also, uh, the script literally said incomprehensible. Uh, <laughs> did not actually use Welsh. Uh, just said incomprehensible and let the voice actress make stuff up. Are you serious? Oh, 100% serious. That is actually what they did. In a way, kind of accurate to the time, but not in the way that you want. Yep. Um, the perspective that you want. Yep. <sighs> we hate when uh, people hating the Welsh uh, turns out to just get normalized. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a couple other things we need to do inside. Um... Back at, are you still around base? Yes. Uh, could you build a couple of cooking racks over the fire? I think you can fit three over it. I will try. Let me see what I. Have. So I think that's the big thing I forgot to do. Oh yeah, uh, Agalias, you are, oh yeah, you weren't in the community when we did that playthrough. Yeah, they had the Mari Lewid at Sawin, in Gloucestershire, in the ninth century. <laughs> Yep, so those just have to get directly on top of the fire. Alright. 
right. And then we can make raw meat be not raw meat. I was wondering about that. Yes. <laughs> After the game told me I'd eaten too much meat. Now this is this is a dubious uh, bit of lore. I just found a runestone that reads, Long ages passed, when the Allfather Odin united the worlds, he threw down the Vanir, the giants, and those creatures older than any others. The greatest of them could not be killed, but were instead forsaken, exiled here to Valheim for eternity. When they tread the earth, the, rest, the lesser creatures jump like crumbs on a drumskin. You will know them when you see them. Interesting. Now... The reason this is dubious uh, is that the Vanyar uh, won the war. The Aesir and the Vanyar do have a war. Uh, right, the Vanyar are beings like Njörður, Freyr, and Freya. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vanyar, or the Aesir, are gods like Odin, Thor, and Frigg. Um, the Vanyar win the war. Yeah. Like, when they, when they fight, the, supposedly... Uh, Asgard, according to, like, one source that's kind of questionable, uh, or kind of difficult to interpret, I should say. It is our most important source for the cosmology, but it is difficult to make sense of. Uh, it seems like the Vanir win. So, saying that the Vanir were cast down is wild. Right. Also, on the grounds that, um, Freya is one of the Vanir. You know, mildly important figure. I mean, it happens to her, but for a while. Yeah. You know, Freyr fights literally the biggest bad of Norse mythology in actual volcanic eruption. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, Sur Surtur, uh, the main, like, leader of all the enemies of the gods at Ragnarok is just a volcanic eruption. He gets mentioned in exactly one other source, uh, besides Vilispa, or besides mentions of Ragnarok. There is one other time where he's mentioned, and it is in a thing that is... It's in a text called Bergbu uh, where there is a poem spoken by a, uh, mountain dweller, Bergbui, named Hatmundur, that specifically identifies Searcher's home as inside the magma chamber of a volcano. So, yeah. It's not it's not really ambiguous, it's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's interesting. So the volcano is the enemy. Yeah, uh it's pretty clear that uh by the tenth century when stuff starts getting written when our sources really start getting written down, they conceive of the end of the world as a volcano. Right. Which is extremely fun. That is fun. Do you see that elaborated anywhere? Or, like, how do you see that referred to? Uh, the, the person who did this work is Matthias Nordvig, uh, but basically just everyone agrees that uh, the poem in Bergu Without Her is describing a volcanic eruption. It has literally every stage of a Plinian eruption from uh, the initial earthquake, to it spewing up stuff, to the eruption seeming to society, to this massive explosion where ash covers the world. Th this is the poem that the Bergbui speaks to the people in the saga. Ragnarok in the poem Vilisbau has the same set of steps, it's just not quite as explicitly obvious. Uh, Interesting. And so it's just like, well, okay, the only realistic way to interpret this is that it is just a volcanic eruption, right? right. It's pretty self-evidently just the same thing. And so, yeah, uh, I find that argument eminently persuasive. Yeah. So... Well, that actually brings me to another question. Yes. Because uh, I know that volcanic eruption is a current former specialty of yours. Yes. Uh, it was technically what my master's thesis was about, sort of. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
I know people have mixed feelings about master's thesis, so I didn't want to come out and say it explicitly. I, I actually don't hate my master's thesis. I'm one of very few that think that that work is fundamentally pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty interesting to me. Thank you. Um, and I was interested in, because in that thesis, you look at how one particularly large volcanic eruption manifests or is reflected in the, is it the sagas or other types yeah, of history? Yeah, it's, it's a, mostly the uh, one particular saga called Sturtland the Saga, which instead of being a saga about uh, ancient people, is written by one of the participants in the saga. Like, Sir Thorlison is the main character for uh, about half of the lit runtime of the saga, and he's the guy who writes it. Kind of fun. It's super fun. Oh, I so broke everything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I was also looking at the annals, which, you know, they're medieval chronicles. Uh, yeah. They're, they're predictable. You know what you're getting into with one of those. I love a good chronicle, yeah. And I was thinking of... Um... At least in English Chronicles, there tends to be this very, almost passive-aggressive way that that environmental events are brought in. For example, you know, Adam levied a tax on the peasants and the nobles. Also, it rained blood for three days. Yeah. Or, casually. Yeah, casually. Or, uh... We went to a war that I'm going to casually imply was a bad idea. Also, there were several earthquakes this year. Yep. Um, it was a sort of catty juxtaposition, almost. The, yeah, uh, the annals in Iceland do the exact same thing. So they're like, uh, this person died, this person died, this person died. There was a massive plague that killed 400 people between uh, the Feast of St. Mary and Easter, uh, and also the Bishop of Norway went to Greenland for a visit. <laughs> Not that that had anything to do with it. Uh, yeah, uh, it's... Oh, don't break my house, thank you. I nearly dropped a tree on our house. Would that... Does that only hurt bosses, or does it also hurt houses? It hurts everything. Uh, trees will damage... Falling objects will damage everything that they hit. Be those enemies, uh, our house, uh, other trees. It's all fair game. Now that we've killed this deer... Yeah. I mean, we've done that. We did that a while ago. Uh... Does that affect the environment in any way? Uh, it lets us uh, do further destruction on the environment. It doesn't really okay. cause visible like deterioration in weather effects. Uh, right. But it does let us uh, move into the Black Forest, where we have uh, scarier enemies, but also mine uh, tin and copper to mine. Speaking of which, I should get that set up. Uh, because of course we have to mine uh, tin and copper, or in order to make bronze, in order to do other things. Because for some truly staggering reason that I do not, still do not understand, uh, this game just said, "Hey, you know what would be ideal if we." Uh, if we did, like, the classic four stages of, uh, human history, you know, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Yeah. Uh, what if we just, like, did that in our video game? No, don't tell me I'm carrying too much. I desperately need to be able to drop one of the... Can we flatten out a space? I wonder if I'm too close to the thing. I might. We might be too close to the area to the spawn point, uh, for oh, okay. to be able to drop this. What are oh, you trying to drop? I'm trying to dr build a smelter. Uh, uh, which I you just picked up. You're probably now overburdened because I ju you just picked up a bunch no, of really heavy stuff. Oh, you're not. I'm carrying the smelter with. Uh, you're carrying a thing called an item called circling cores, right now. Uh, those are the key pieces I need. We need to make the smelter. Okay. I can put it. Mm -hmm. 
I've got flint. Ah, serpent core. And do I put that down? If you just eat those out of my face, I should be able to set this thing down. All right. Oh. Pick up. I'm now carrying too much, but that will not stop me. Boom. And I don't have enough wood to make a charcoal kiln. Uh, do you have, or sorry, not enough stone. Do you have like 20 stone? 20 stone, I sure do. Huh. And that's another smelter. I don't need another smelter. I need a charcoal kiln. Oh, uh, there we go. Come on, let me place it, please. Please. I was thinking of Flickr that there's a spot I can drop this. Get rid there. Of ah. And then if I grab a bunch of these, Uh, I'm going to just split this stack, and hopefully that's going to make- I'm still carrying too much. Why am I carrying so much? Oh, I'm carrying- Yeah, that's my problem. Uh, that's why I'm carrying too much. The random pile of 50 wood, uh, does cause issues. I'll need- I was been sent here to kill things and exploit the environment. Yes. Uh, we are pretty much exclusively here to, um- Explode the environment. To make the environment have an extremely bad day. Which is so an interesting means... take. Is that is that consistent with the kind of thing that Odin might send someone to do uh, in the sources? What's his relationship to? What are the gods' relationship to the environment? God, uh, I know Freya fights a volcano. Yeah, so, it is... It is extremely complicated, and, uh, right, Chris Abram uh, wrote a whole book about this called Evergreen Ash, where he takes a, like, deliberately eco-critical read and just goes like, uh, uh so we're not going to pretend that this is quote-unquote historical, uh, we're just going to do an eco-critical reading and see what happens, which is very fun, and I hardly approve. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he goes, uh basically argues that the inevitable order or consequence of creating the world is that Ragnarok will happen and everyone will die. Uh, the whole world will be unmade horribly. Because the gods, the gods kind of desperately want control over the world. Uh, right, so in Norse mythology, the world is created by murdering Ymir. Uh, right, so Ymir is a primordial being that's created by the merging of, like, Ash, or of, uh, words are hard, uh, by the merging of the fires of Muspelheim with the frost, uh, of Niflheim, just, like, creates, out of nothing, uh, creates a being called Ymir. Eventually, he gives, uh, he gives birth to the race of the Yatnar, and for eventually uh, another being gets licked out of the ices of Nefheim, ca called Buri, and Buri marries a giant called Bestla, I believe, uh, and they their son is Bor, and Bor's son is Odin. So Odin's like, you know, the fourth fourth generation of being uh, in the world, but then he and his brothers uh, just murder uh, Ymir, and they use his body in order to create the worlds as we know them. Oh. This is um, controversial, as it turns out. This makes a lot of people very unhappy, and the response to uh, this made us unhappy is what if all of you drown in a flood of Ymir's blood. And this is why the Yitnar hate the gods, because the gods did kind of a little bit murder most of them. Right. 
turns out that makes you unpopular. Uh, no one could have guessed this. <laughs> Certainly not Odin. But yeah, uh, so then Chris Abrams suggests, and I tend to agree, that basically the gods desperately wish they had control over the environment, but they don't. Mm. And the environment is very unhappy of them. Right, so the Yutnar largely, uh, at least in some way, shape, or form, represent elemental forces, right? It's not totally one-to-one, -one, clear-cut, simple, but mm -hmm. they at least overlap with being elemental beings. Uh, so, right, you have uh, some that are... You have one that's, like, named Logi, which is just fire. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got one... Right, you've uh, Hathgrimur, or sorry, Hathmundur, and Surtur are also fire beings. Uh, there's a category of beings called Hrimthursar, the, like, ice th thursar. Uh, translating these words is very difficult, but, right, they're, like, <laughs> giant, we'll use a catch-all term of giant in English, uh, though that is not straightforwardly accurate. Uh, but, you know, we'll use it anyway. Problematic terms are problematic, but we use them anyway for reasons. Uh, but yeah, so we have, like, ice giants, and fire giants, and, uh, some of them do, like, illusion magic, which is weird. Uh, but, like, one is named Etli, Old Age, uh, re wrestles Thor in one story. Oh, interesting. Yeah, uh, right... The, uh, the person putting on these, like, challenges gets absolutely terrified. Uh, his name is Utgar the Loki. He's no relation to the other Loki. Uh, <laughs> and so he looks, sees that and goes, like, uh, Thor gets wrestled to one knee. And Utgar the Loki is just like, what the, what the hell? Excuse me? What do you mean you didn't lose to old age? Please stop. Please never come back here again. You are way too strong for your own good. Because, huh. yeah. I can uh, see how that, that has a sort of aspirational quality to it. Yeah. So, right, uh, uh, the giants are absolutely terrified of Thor. Uh, but, right, they are. these are all, in a very real way, like, kind of... Uh, very sort of primordial beings, uh, and also uh, beings that are, in a lot of ways, very difficult to work with uh, in terms of interpretation. And so yeah. Chris Abram goes, okay, well, we just take these all, accept these all as, like, elemental forces, though that is a problematic dichotomy of, el like, primordial, primitive, uh, elemental versus civilized. Right, that's not a clean dichotomy, and we right. shouldn't pretend that it is, but uh, if we accept it at all, then the rivalry between the gods and the Yetnar can and should be read as a fight of the environment resisting its own exploitation. Ooh. Do we ever see that in this game? I mean, the environment will sometimes attack us. The True. uh, at certain points there will be uh, events where like a bunch of gray dwarves will attack the building. Oh, and I've just seen them sort of chilling in the building. Somewhere. Yeah, you know, <laughs> why don't we leave these uh to go make their own thing? Because we have to locate some tin anyway. Uh, okay. So why don't we leave these to their own devices? Let me unload my inventory so when I, I say when, not if, I die horribly. Uh, we lose a little <laughs> bit less. Um, That's actually a fair point. Luckily, uh, also, do you have like three more deer heads? If you do, deer I can heads. I can do fun nonsense if we have a few more deer heads. I did not get a deer head. Uh, no more deer trophies. All right. I don't think so. Cool. Uh, when I've got five, I can build. Uh, I've got some pieces to let us make a, a very ridiculous weapon. 
Oh, excellent. Yes. Uh, I just have to kill, uh, go hunt a few more deer first. But let's go try and find a pine forest because everyone knows pine forests are infinitely spookier. True. Also, okay. I've got a bunch of food right now. Uh, I... So. Uh, I have a little bit of food. Perfect. I've got like 20, 20 deer uh, shanks, so we should be fine. All right. I'm just going to pick a direction and start running, uh, and then we'll see what we run into. Fantastic. Also, I'm going to and... activate my going to activate my ability. Kaboom! We've got the good runs now. Also, what does the runes don't say? Blue white shufflers and muck. The neckers are small lizards near to Valheim. Certainly a mean spirit that they will attack on sight and must be destroyed like vermin. They stay near water because of the creatures of the land loathe and deplore them. Yet no creature is all bad. Their tails are delicious. Belatedly, a question from Magus Trissa. Yeah. Who asks, is that a kiln? It's kind of a kiln. Uh, we're using it to make coal. Uh, to make coal. To make more useful things. Kiln adjacent. Yes. Uh, also, Kurabachi redeemed a compliment, so something about this game we particularly like. And I've got one right here. So you see how these stones are all set up uh, in like this like vaguely two, like bow-shaped thing? This is called a uh, ship setting, uh, and this is a very common thing in uh, medieval Scandinavian burials. And somewhere within this ship setting, if we dig down and do a little bit of desecration, we're gonna find skeletal remains right here. Oh, incredible! Yoink! <laughs> Damn it! So there's only gonna be one set per thing. Correct. There is one person buried per ship setting, which is broadly <laughs> speaking correct. Uh. Oh. Right, broadly speaking, that's fine. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions, but not very many. Mass graves are very rare in Norse contexts, though they do. Uh, there are a couple of notable ones from very early in the Viking Age in Estonia. And is that, I mean, I guess we can infer from this game that the sensibilities around death are pretty elaborate, ceremonial, the, or the... is it a population thing? They're extremely elaborate, uh, especially in elite contexts, right, uh, rituals around, uh, uh, death and dying are, like, start elaborate and get more elaborate, uh, as time goes, uh, on, so, mm -hmm. the big fanciest ones are gonna be, uh, big ship burials, so, people, uh, are buried with a boat, just on an entire longship, uh, usually two or three people, along with uh, horses, uh, dogs, bunch of grave goods, and... Oh gosh, what are the other things? There's a couple other things uh, that are usually found in them. Uh, and these are both men and women are buried in these hyper-elaborate uh, ship burials. Oh, dear. Hello, dear. Get back here. Give thanks for Frey. Oh, this is very earthy. Give thanks to Frey for the rain and sun, for the shoots that break the earth's skin and the fruits of the vine. Give thanks to Odin for the flesh and bone, the smoke from the cooking fire, the warm pelt, and the strength of your arm. That's dubious. Uh, that is a whole I lot dubious say. about that. <laughs> um, authenticity vibes on a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> like a 3. Oof. Um... Notably, uh, it actually does demonstrate something that I think is way too common and not good uh, in games, which is, uh, right, we don't have a ton of prayers to the gods, and so okay. the solution that uh, tend to, tends to be done is to just, like, assert some sort of similarity like, extremely vague similarity to Native American prayers. Oh, yeah, that's a little... Right, you you can... Now that I was pointed out, right, it's easy to kind of feel that similarity, right? That giving thanks to specific uh, 
deific entities for specific right. things is very much uh, consistent with Haudenosaunee traditions. Right. And so, while the Norse material uh, says uh, that right, or occasionally says, uh, that you can... Certain gods will be prayed to for certain purposes, so like, Ullur will be prayed to in a duel. Uh, uh, Adam Abraman, you know, another totally reliable source, uh, says uh, that Thor is prayed to for uh, fair weather and foul. Oh, uh, this guy's d dangerous. Let me take uh, take point on him. Okay. The gr the gray dwarf brute is way stronger than the regular gray dwarf. Oh heck, oh, that's a shaman. Uh, that's these are gray dwarf shamans too. Uh, again, problematic language uh, right there. I was just gonna say yeah. But uh, they do poison people. Uh, so they're and they heal themselves and poison me. So they're jerks. Uh, help would be appreciated. Okay, we're good. Right. We're good. I got one. Uh, there's another one up here. No, don't. Stop. 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 Honestly, I'm just gonna, like, face check these guys. Uh, cause it's easier. I've got- I've got way better armor than you do. Cause I killed a bunch of trolls. I beat up a bunch of trolls. Uh, cause we're now in the area where we can get trolls. But you can see we're in an area that says it's the Black Forest. And so we've got these pine trays. Yes, and those are all oh, the sky. Though. The sky is so good. Yeah. So the pine trees are good, but ominous. And well, pine sky. trees, pine trees are super important because they're the next tier up of wood quality. Pine trees will drop core wood, uh, where uh, everything else is up to this point is dropping just wood. Oh, that's the brute. Hang on, I got you. See, he hits so hard. Even to me, he hits like 10, 12. Blocked, got him. Nice. Rolled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more. Uh, and these guys will just kind of keep on coming. Uh, we don't really need copper right now, so what we're really looking for is tin. Okay. Yeah, so we don't need to worry about getting copper deposits, we just need to get in far enough to find tin deposits. We also can find, uh, you know, the genu the obvious choice for, we need dungeons with skeletons. And so they put them inside of Neolithic dolmens. Okay. So the skeleton dungeon, I mean, this, this kind of lore area is where we get the skeleton dungeon. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If we find one, we'll go in, and it will be uh, not a great time for anyone. <laughs> These are a lot Ideally, of boars. Much oh. Ideally, it's a better time for us than it is for the skeletons. Oh. oh. These, boars are... These boars kind of ruin your day. Um, oh, yeah. They've got stars on them, uh, which means that they are higher level. Uh, oh, things can have one, two, or... I think I've only ever seen something with three stars once. But the more, basically they drop m more goodies, uh, mm -hmm. but at the cost of being significantly more dangerous. This land is hard and wild, but we who are brought here are harder still. Take comfort, traveler, in the gifts before you. The good wood and stone, the fruits and flowers of the forests. Look also to the wild boar who roam these lands. They fear fire and the hand of man, but they can be taught to obey it. Yes. Go quietly to them. And feed them a mushroom. Paraphrasing. It's either a mushroom or carrots. Carrots. <laughs> Love it. Cause yeah, this is in this area you can also get carrot seeds. Excellent. Which means you could then grow carrots, uh, I guess. Oh we got some leather scraps. Nice. Nice. And the so. game is getting complimented for its uh, mist effect. Uh, oh, there was also a question about dueling culture. Uh, and Agalias answered it reasonably well. How often do they fight duels? Uh, there are judicial duels in Norse context. 
Uh, so, right, the kind of ultimate legal dispute uh, is you fight each other to the death. Okay. Broadly speaking, uh, instead of fighting each other to the death, you just randomly murder each other instead uh, in feuds. This is specifically a... Dueling is specifically a judicial thing. It's not... Uh, outside of that, you just get in skirmishes. Because I guess this comes back to the everyone's violent. Each other is also a... Exactly. When every farm is basically its own little kingdom, uh, suddenly everything's fair game for everyone to fight everybody else. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's not much of an exaggeration. Right. So the I'm gathering from that that the hierarchical political structure is not super rigid or established? Um, depends on when and where you're talking about. Uh, early in the Viking Age, it's theoretically the law code suggests that there are two statuses. You are either enslaved or you are uh, free. And if you are free, everyone is equal. In practice, uh, not quite. Oh, we have exited the area we need to be in, actually. Uh... So, in practice, uh, the hierarchy basically goes, uh, complete enslaved person, freed person, uh, then above them are, or I should say, freed tenant farmer. So, someone who is too poor to own their own land, so is renting someone else's. Mm -hmm. and then a free landowner. More arrows. And another torch, we'll swap out my torch for a better torch. Uh, above that, we're going to have uh, a chief, someone with a chieftainship, mm -hmm. uh, also known as a Godorth, which starts off as being a hybrid, like, religious judicial appointment, uh, rapidly turns into just a judicial appointment that happens to be the word for priest. Interesting. Uh, and then... Theoretically, above that, in mainland Scandinavia, are going to be the uh, appointees of the uh, king. So, and in that, the uh, jarl, the jarls, and then the king. In Iceland, uh, the hierarchy stops at the Gildorth. There is okay. there is only one position at all above that, and it is uh, an elected position called the law speaker. And that is a three-year term where your job is to memorize all of the laws. <laughs> so that's kind of the important academic role. Exactly. <laughs> Gar. Uh, there is a deer that I really want to get because it's likely to drop a deer head. And I need the deer head uh, in order to make my dumb weapon that is uh, made out of deer heads. Oh no. It is a hammer made out of deer heads. Yes. But that involves Incredible. this deer stopping, stop running away, or at least turn around. So that I can, like, or get stuck in a tree or something. Your AI is not very good. There we go. No. There we go. One. Now, I ran out of stamina. Does parrying give you stamina here? No, sadly. Oh, man. Okay. I actually want to come back to that prompt about things we appreciate about the game, but uh, expand it to games in general. Is mm -hmm. there any particular mechanic in a Norse or Viking game you've played that has surprised you with how accurate or um, mm. how pleasingly accurate it is, despite maybe not being the thing one would immediately adapt in making a Viking game? Hmm. That's that's a tricky one, because these are some really nice... Uh, right, th there are a lot of games that all, in many ways, do very similar stuff. Uh, but... And a lot of them, like, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has a lot of mechanics and does a lot of research, and I don't really like the execution on any of them. I don't <laughs> adore the execution on any of them. 
Uh, right, I remember you saying that they'd they'd brought in a specialist, but kind of saved it for, or saved her input for the, is it DLC, or a kind of educational The, the Discovery Tour, yeah. They, they talked to a lot more experts for Discovery Tour than they did for the base game. Hmm. Like, uh, an entirely different set of people that were just brought in specifically for that. Oh, hey, I found skeletons. You want to go fight some skeletons? Uh, while I think about the answer to that question? Of course. Right, it, This game certainly has some things that they do that is kind of very fun in not necessarily being accurate in a good way, uh, but certainly being accurate in a way. Uh, just relating to all of the violence uh, and all the environmental destruction, right? Because you've seen already, I think, two people can really do a number on this landscape. Yeah. Like, it's not, not pleasant uh, when things actually get down to it. That's correct. That's just correct. Uh, they... Iceland was fully forested when people started permanently living there around 870. Mm -hmm. Well, I say fully. That's an exaggeration. But the coastal areas of Iceland were full of birch forests. By 930, there were no trees. Right. So what we're doing here is very historical. Very historical. Well... Can we go in here? Yeah. Ah. What social class were, cast were skeletons in? Above or below landowners? Uh, joke, joking question has a serious answer, and that is, uh, they are below landowners, or they are above many, many landowners, but below chieftains, because chieftains can actually bring lawsuits against them. Oh, I love that. You, that's actually the main way that you deal with them when they start really getting in trouble. Right, when they start really being annoying, you deal with them by uh, suing them. Again, Edervigus Saga is a delight. Be careful, some of these rooms are really scary. Okay. Right, most, most rooms in here are probably fine, but there's a few rooms that are really scary. They scary in a skeleton way or in a... Uh, as in has spawner rooms, uh, so they'll just keep spawning more skeletons. Ooh, nice. But mushrooms. Oh, heck, there's... F that's a two-star skeleton! Ah! Panic. Uh, if we need to run okay. away, if we need to run away, you can just walk out the front door, and okay. it's fine. Yep, don't get hit again. Uh, get outside. Get outside, I'll... Yep, run outside. Goodbye, two-star skeleton. We'll come back and take care of him once we heal up. We just need to get outside to heal up. Oh, I see. And pray that he doesn't, um, you know, follow us. They don't usually follow us, but I've seen them follow... I've seen trolls follow me outside of, uh, their troll dens before. Right. Also, all my stuff's about to break. Uh, while we're here, I'm going to... Or while we're waiting, I'm going to build another crafting table so we can repair all our stuff. Okay. And we can have, just use this as a... Temporary base of operations. Uh, please land. Please drop. Please. There. Now we have to do this. And this. And this. Oh. I am out of wood. Do you have more wood? Let me see. Because otherwise I'm about... I, I do. Fantastic. I if you could just... If you... Sweet. I am now carrying too much, but we're going to fix that real quick. Because <laughs> I need to go build, and then... Theoretically... Build. Theoretically, that should already be enough. Does it let us use that? It does let us use that. Amazing. Repair everything. Great. Uh, you can have the wood back, because I have too much to... Oh, I'm carrying some copper. That's why I'm so easily weighed down. There you go. Flint. I accidentally uh, did not get rid of all of my copper. Oh, we can upgrade. Well, I can't upgrade, but... 
Uh, actually, can yeah. we... Uh, oh, I can't upgrade any of my stuff either. Uh, oh, I have the material to do some of the upgrades, I just didn't. Uh, do, I, do you want to upgrade the deer head cape? I've got enough skins for you. Sure. Uh, let me give you just six random deer hides, because I don't actually care about those, I only care about the heads. <laughs> <laughs> the heads. Okay. I need the heads for my silly weapons. <laughs> Is this enough to upgrade? It should be enough to upgrade at least one, one thing. Mm. Bow requires more deer hides, uh, wood and stone. Deer hide. Can I upgrade it if I'm wearing it? Yeah, you should be able to. Oh. Maybe out of luck. Hmm. Rag tunic. I need... If it isn't letting you upgrade it, it should tell you what's... Oh! You know, I know exactly what the problem is. Um, we need to drop a... Uh, the upgrade to the item to the table next to it. Uh, which is, in this case, is the logging... The, like, uh, woodcutting station. And there's a guy throwing rocks at me. Jerk. Oh! Oh no, I don't want just my fist for this. So yeah, we need to drop... We need to go here, and we can drop a chopping block next to it, and now we should be able to upgrade things. Okay. Oh, yes we can. Because you need, you need two stars in order to get two things. I see. So rag tunic, and this will... And deer hide cape. Perfect. Yay, stronger stuff. Oh, no. no. Nope. I need three stars for that. Oh. Spooky. But I can upgrade the shield and my normal tunic. Uh, and my looks like our next step then is. Uh, in terms of upgrading things, uh, is the tanning rack, which needs wood, flint, leather scraps, and deer hide. Let's see what we got. Ten deer hide. A boar trophy. Exciting. That's not the, that's not the right animal's head. I, Damn it. <laughs> I, I only need deer trophies. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, what were the other things? Deer hide? Uh, we need, it's like five deer hide, some leather scraps, uh, some wood, and some flint. Have leather scraps, yes. It, but it's 20 leather scraps and 15 flint and 10 wood and five deer hides for the tanning rack. So I think we just, I think we just wait for that for our home base. Okay. Right now we've got a much more important thing to do of mm -hmm. running here like fools. <laughs> Uh, where is he? Come on. Where are you at? Where where did he go? Did he leave? Did he just go back? Oh, there he is. Found him. Ow. We will need to run away again. Uh, oh, I am going to need to run away. Yep. That's fine. Oh. You do you. Uh, I'm also running. Ah! Yeah, all right. The, this two-star skeleton is ruining our day. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's true. But we do need to kill, get through him. Um, so we, because oh, unfortunately, the reason why we need to go through there is to locate where the second boss is. I see. I can't eat more cooked deer meat. Nope. Um, unfortunately, it's just like every ten seconds it'll just update your health. You're healing continuously every, st or in theory, you're healing continuously every second, but it's gonna check that tick every ten. Uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, two star skeleton. Wait, maybe I should upgrade my shield. If you can, yeah. I think you need leather scraps for it. Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, go for it. That's gonna make that way more durable. So. Nice. 
is this a natural cavern? It looks artificial. It is artificial. It is a Neolithic dolmen, which a, is a specific type of, you know, stacked stone megalithic burial. Okay, I'm going to do another. I'm going to chip him down a little bit more. I'll be right back. Uh, okay. The okay. fact that there is all this stuff underneath is very silly. That's not how dolmens work. Um, it does seem like it would be a lot of labor. Come on, attack me. Um, what's this? No, I need you to attack me, sir. Sir. Thank you. Got him. We're good. You can come in now. Hey, nice. I just had to focus mode. <laughs> also, there's a bunch of things in there. Oh, this guy has a bow. Uh, jerk. He's also got a star? Ah! Alright, so who's in it here causing us... Oh, it doesn't have the right room. Uh, it just didn't... Have the thing we wanted. It's got coins, and it's got rubies, and amber, and it's got another Sertling core that we don't really need. But it just did not have the room we hoped it would have. This room would get us to, or get us the thing we need to get to this. Exactly. We're looking for a room with another Vaviesir in it. Ah. Uh. So, yeah. Sadly, not this one. What that means is it's time to go deeper. And continue our search for tin and or uh, bosses. And maybe trolls. Deer heads. <laughs> and deer heads. Lots of things right now. But also, while we have time, uh, let's see, there was a question you had asked that I was supposed to answer. Of... Oh, the mechanic that was pleasantly surprising oh, yeah. in no. the context of the Norse or Viking game. Right, I got. Uh, Right, that was the deforestation, the extravagant deforestation being, uh, right, sheer irresponsibility when it comes towards, uh, the natural landscape is in fact extremely medieval Scandinavian of it. And I wish it wasn't. Because, yeah, they then have to, uh, import wood from Norway because no one has enough wood uh, or you're either looking for driftwood coming in from Siberia, or wow. importing wood from Norway, because no one has enough wood to do anything useful. I made short work of Iceland. Yeah. Oh, hello. He's big. Ow. Block. Hey, get over here. You're fighting me. Hey, stop it. There we go. Yeah, the, the, the thing I broke was a spawn point for these guys, so I was just like, no thank you. Uh... Don't care. Don't want that in my life. Not today. Exactly. Also, run fast. Hey, I think the, no, this is copper. Blech. That's not the one I care about. Uh, the ground shaking. Uh, is that... Okay, no, ground shaking because this game is bad at slopes. Uh, not because there's a troll about to, like, oh, maul our okay. face. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that some... The ground shakes in both cases. Uh, it's just getting your face mauled by a troll is worse. True. Have we seen a troll yet? No. We have not seen a troll yet. You'll know when you see a troll. <laughs> And also, you are very poorly equipped to fight a troll. Uh, well, if you want where, to... That's where running away comes in clutch. <laughs> exactly. I can be... Uh, I thought I heard one. I'm paranoid. <laughs> oh, a new biome. We can't actually go in here. Oh, no, this still says it's Black Forest. Okay, it's just... Nope, there it is, mountain. We can't do mountain, oh. we will freeze to death. Okay. 
Uh, this is, we have to kill the second boss in order to do mountain. Because the second boss drops us things that keep us from start, uh, freezing to death on the mountain. Ooh, that's helpful. Oh, there's more and skeletons. They have a building made of rock for once. Watch out, that skeleton is scary. Uh, I'll try and pull aggro. Get over here. Okay. My parry skills. Oh no. Uh, do we, uh, do we just. Oh, yep, there he is! Hey, chat, yeah. there's a troll. Hey, chat, there's exactly one way to beat trolls, and it is, uh, you run and. He's got a log. Uh, we are in so much trouble. It's you run, and I'm gonna stick him full of arrows until he gets upset and falls over. Do you try and pay attention to where he's running? Because. He's gonna do a lot of damage on the way if you're not careful. And he might- the trying to- while we're trying to run away, uh, we might end up running into places we don't want. So if you can look forward and uh, make sure- We're not going to end up in trouble. I will do what I can to take care of this guy. Oh god, I am in not a great spot. I am stuck on a slope right now. It is not good news. You're good, you're good. I'm doing okay. Just out of log range. I'm trying to stay just out of log- oh god, I'm not- uh, Good thing I had the good jumps active still. Cause otherwise, I was about to have a very bad day there. I need to uh, just- ooh, blueberries. Hello. My blueberries. Oh, he's just doing straight up damage to- He- guys. he murders the environment worse than we do. And that's saying something. <laughs> oh no, now's not the time to be stuck on a rock. Trolls are not- oh god, also not the time for me to be stuck on a rock. Uh, I'm kiting him around in a corner. Uh, I'm now just way down the slope from you. Huh. Oh, we're not that far. I guess I oh, that's not bad. I thought you had kept, kept going up the slope and I- No, no. I got stuck. Hey, you're doing work. I'm doing yeah. work. Uh, I took out three of these guys in the grind session, so I'm feeling good about my ability to take them on. Though I can only do, I can only do one, two if I'm super, duper lucky. Uh, with my bow right now. Ah. Uh. But yes, uh, trolls are not affected by daylight. Uh, this is just how this works. Uh, my troll hide. Oh. Oh, fine. I guess you did. I grabbed. I grabbed the coins. Instead. Uh, there's a fifth troll hide. I've got also five in there, which would let me finish the set, which is really cool. Right. I've got five at back at base, which would let me just make a full set of troll armor now. Which supposedly makes me stealthy. I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> troll trophy. No. Troll trophy. Can you pick it up? All right, have a good night, Magistrissa. And yeah, uh, trolls are not affected by daylight. Uh, Harusa, that is uh, not entirely a thing invented, but it is largely a thing uh, invented. Uh, right, there's some, there's some like Icelandic folklore that is like trolls don't like being outside, and in the poem Alvismal. Uh, the dverger, the, so the dwarf, Alvis, uh, turns to stone in daylight after being tricked by Thor. After answering a bunch of questions. Because we've got to get our cosmological information somehow. Is that where Tolkien gets it? Yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that was successful though. Uh, we managed to kill a troll, which was one of my soft goals for the day, was kill troll. Uh, and we did that with not too much difficulty, honestly. It's Feels good. Of you to say we, and I will take it. <laughs> <laughs>
you distracted him vaguely, and uh, I had a bow. <laughs> the bow does seem crucial in that scenario. You you just straight up lose uh, if you try and fight one of these like hand to hand, because they hit you. I... They hit for about oh. seventy. I see. Yeah, that's about twice my health right now. Yeah, that is um, nine more health than I have. So, all right. I think this is there's not. I think there's nothing left this direction of note because it looks like it's just the cliff. So. I'm getting very stuck on the environment, so I'm gonna. Ooh, this is tin. Oh. That's not going to be enough tin, but this is some tin. We need for the next boss. Our single piece of tin. <laughs> One tin, please. One tin. Now, not even tin, tin ore, because crafting games are too complicated. <laughs> I think there's more down here. Let me take a look. Yeah. Like there's no there's no real reason for get to have this many steps in order to be like hey let's just make let us make bronze. It's not like you know an a an active bronze trade is active in Scandinavia at this time. This is the Viking Age. We are uh, a thousand years after the Nordic Bronze Age ended. Oh no, I might be dead here. Uh oh. Uh, I'm on my way. I'm stuck in the water and there's a shaman looking at me. Oh no. I got, I got you, I got the distraction on my way, uh, give me 15 seconds, uh, actually not even that long, two, I've got this, oh, I am now also in the water, that's bad. <laughs> that was, I'm now out of the water, but I don't know. Great, uh, I am also out of the water, uh, the Great Dwarf is in the water, in so. The water. Perfect. Yeah, no, he's just and hanging out. Collaboration with the environment. <laughs> he, he is just gonna have his little, like, pool party, and we're gonna let him. I love that for you, Shaman. Look, we all need pool parties sometimes. Everyone needs a break. <laughs> Alright, so I've got a piece of tin there. Uh, is this gonna encumber me? Ah, oh, heck. It does encumber me. That's bad. Uh, I'm gonna throw away a bunch of rocks. And... You focus your own health. I've got plenty of health right now, so I'm not worried. These guys do, like, nothing to me. Also, don't hit them with your fists. Oh, my fists. Yeah. Wait, where's my... A deer. Deer? Yeah. I mean, deer, deer means potentially another deer head for my glorious collection and silly weapons. Let me see if I can keep it in. In rain. Heck, uh, I am still out of, of... What can I actually get rid of usefully? I guess I'm going to throw away this tin uh, in order to fight this guy in order to pick up this tin again. What's your weight capacity look like right now? Oh, I see. Uh... Oh, I just aggroed the deer. That's my bad. Because <laughs> if you I got... I need to drop something, but I probably have stuff I can't drop. Alright, um, I've got a, like eight more wood I can get rid of. That's okay. I mean, uh, if I don't need 44 wood right now, then... Yeah, 44 oh. wood's irrelevant right now. Okay. To the sea. Then here, take these eight copper ores that I've randomly got. Because that should give us enough to be okay. Oh, there you are. That should, be, that should leave us both okay? Perfect. Because if I, uh, then I'm gonna keep stay on the coast here and keep looking for tin deposits, uh, as we start making our way back. Because we've got an okay amount of tin now. I've got like 13, it looks like, which is gonna be enough to at least make some bronze. I just don't know if it's gonna make enough bronze. Giant kind of a pan cultural. This is the thing we have to kill. It's not quite like us. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen was 
was really here. Exactly. Uh, there is a lot of that in this game. Uh, there used to be people here, but now they're either uh, skeletons or uh, tree people, and therefore we can just, like, murder them. Right? They have signaled being sufficiently other that we can do murder. Right, right. Oh, hi, Shaman. I'm actually trying to heal over here, so I'm just gonna let you... Uh, I got you. Heck, that was not the one that I needed to worry about. Uh, annoyingly, I just don't ha I'm not in a great spot on stamina at the moment. Yeah. Slow, which is just slowing things up, because I just need to eat more. I need to eat more food. More mushrooms, no problem. There we go. Uh... Beautiful. All right. And I've got more tin down here, which is great news for us. And while we're mining, uh, uh, do you have another question? Yeah. I was going to say, what is something underappreciated in Norse history that you would like to see in a future game? Given that you're, you're sort of bracing yourself for many more... Men, games. Many more Viking games, but the thing I want to see is, you know, literally any time period other than the Viking Age. <laughs> right? I mean, there's human settlement going back to at least, like, identifiable as, like, three or 4,000 BC what? in Scandinavia. And so... Uh... Seems kind of obvious that there's a lot of time that's really useful. Yeah. And so, right, like, my specialty is 13th and 14th century literature, which is full of people that are just so dramatic that it would be very, it would be very fun, uh, I think, to have games set yeah. in that period. And then you can get away with more goofy weapons, right? Uh, because they're later, and if you get late enough, you can pretend you're just importing them from Germany or whatever, they're making all the goofy weapons. <laughs> Classic Germany. Like, I mean, there is this period where they are just, everyone just realizes, wait, we can just make stuff, and then they try things, and they're all bad. <laughs> so, uh, right, you could have all of those in your games. Ooh, that's a deal. That would be a great... Hang on. Oh. Uh, nailed it. Deer head. Deer head. Yes, I got a deer head. Nice. Success. Uh, I now only need two more deer heads. Uh, but the other thing that I want to see, uh, this is kind of the long-running uh, joke, is Ace Attorney uh, Viking Edition. No. Because, yes, absolutely yes. Because it's an intense... It's an intensely violent culture in a lot of respects, but it's also an intensely legalistic culture. Right. Right. This is a culture where people go to court over everything, and there's incredibly developed uh, rituals uh, and procedures around how you do court. Right. And given would... how much of that is just super dramatic, you should just have an Ace Attorney game. I would honestly play that for dozens of hours. Exactly. It's objectively a phenomenal concept. We just have to get past the Vikings are single, uh, single, like, monolithic violent entities. Right. Right? The moment we abandon that, there's a lot available to us. Right. All right, I need to throw away more stuff. What stuff can I realistically throw away and be there okay is. with? I found weird amphibians. Uh, the necks, I believe. Drop anything? Uh, their tails. Heck. Do you have any more space to carry stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's split a stack then, uh, and see if I can, if you can pick up that without getting into trouble. Nope, that's too much. All right. Uh, let's split that. Let's split that stack a little bit less. 
as I throw it into the lake. <laughs> Wait, let me see. Uh, Did that pick up, or is that I, still too heavy? I, I, I don't think I can pick it up. Nope, that no. still is too heavy. All right, uh, let me throw away the minimum that I can actually throw away uh, while still be. Hard antlers? The hard antlers? Uh, I've got ten in the box. I don't think we need that, but I just dropped. There's only four there now, so maybe that's enough. Oh yeah. Wait, no. Even that's too much. Wow. Okay, hang on. What can I get rid of here? All right, Zoe. Have a good night. It is getting quite late. Good lord. It is. <laughs> uh, Eastern time is getting close to 1 a.m., so I probably don't have a lot of time left. So, thank you everyone yeah. who's stuck around with that. <laughs> thank you to the late-nighters. Exactly. We have a proposal that Odin's, what would this be, a personal slogan? Gotta do what you gotta do? Yeah. Particularly when it, I think that was apropos of him fighting old age i think that, that was that's thor who fights old age Od odin's is you know uh, ki killing his great great grandfather on his mother's side right uh in order to create the world <laughs> sometimes you just uh, got you gotta murder your family wait <laughs> <laughs> look the less uh, no one said the lessons from norse mythology are good lessons uh but they sure are lessons do we need 39 rocks? We do not need 39 rocks. We can pick up 39 more rocks really easily. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Let's get back to base. Did I successfully pick up whatever you did? You did successfully pick up. You should have two tin ore. Okay. And that's good because that gives us like 24 tin to like 30 copper. So that's a pretty good ratio. Excellent. I am okay with that. We mostly just need to hurry back to where we can, you know, set up shop, smelt a bunch of stuff, and then make bronze. Excellent. What do you want to tell me? Okay. Alright, I walked towards the fence and it exploded. Um... <laughs> Nothing personal, maybe? Uh, yeah. Oh, I should eat some food. That is usually helpful. Oh, we way overshot. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize we traveled so far. We've done like most of the southern part of that island now, of this island now. Oh, fantastic. Here's a whole abandoned village. We yes, that's a fourth deer head. <laughs> get out of here, or I can get, get one here. more. Just one more deer head. I can make a goofy weapon to finish up stream. Because I don't think we're going to get to our goal of making a boat. Uh, oh, that's too bad. Because well, it's... I, to we just need to... We, we need a lot of bronze in order to actually make a boat. Like, we need a frankly, uh, a frankly mean amount of bronze in order to make a enough nails to make a boat. Well, perhaps so, today is not boat day. Today might not be boat day. But today might be goofy deerhead hammer day. And exactly. You know, I think that's a victory in its own right. I agree. We just need to find one more deer then. And we got through a decent chunk of right the basic loop of the game. Four. These deers continue to elude me when I need them most. It's almost like they don't like dying. The nerve. I know, right? They should be pleased to sacrifice themselves to my cult. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that does wrong game. Like a pretty weapon. That, 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 wrong game. That's Cult of the Lamb. True. I've been playing that the last few weeks, too. That's a very fun game. I've heard it's very fun. It is on my list. I think 
the boars are leaving me alone. Hooray. Theoretically, we can tame them eventually. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we could do that right now if we felt like it. Uh, I'm just more worried about deer than I am boars. That's fair. I'll try to proceed a little more subtly. But, but if these deer could show, oh, there's one. I complained and then it worked. <laughs> That's the trick. Exactly. And did it drop the thing I needed? It did. Oh yes. I'm now encumbered, but I don't care because that was perfect. I have five deer heads, which means I should be able to do glorious things. Flint. No, Grayling. I'm here to see a weird weapon, not fight you. Now, the Graylings have turned into such chumps, like, almost instantly. Can't even be bothered to fight them. Oh good, and there's some boars that are like almost in sight of our house, so if we ever feel like taming them, uh, it would actually be really easy to do. Oh excellent. No, we don't need a rock. The urge uh, to just pick things up is so strong. I know, right? <laughs> Definitely one of my um, difficulties with survival games is it's just like, just pick things up. Pick everything up. At some uh, point, you will need to stop mid-fight against a dragon and eat 15 pies. That's what Skyrim taught me. True. And every day since then has been a disappointment. <laughs> also true. Uh, I'm missing two leather scraps. Do you happen to have some? Hey, a deer. No, we don't need more deer. Let me get away from this boar. Boars are what we need for the leather scraps. Oh. Hey, man. And also, troll height cape. I have now become sneaky by the power of the color blue. Huh. I wish that was an exaggeration, that's just how the game works. Oh. Because I'm wearing full blue outfit, I have plus 15 stealth. Well. This opens up a whole conversation about whether blue and green are different colors. <laughs> no, it's blue and black in Old Norse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you have a couple of leather scraps, I can make our goofy hammer. Right, right, right. Leather scraps. Here we go. Hooray. And thank you for throwing them close to me, because I cannot walk at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Is reincarnation much of a thing? Uh, there's two instances of reincarnation, probably, maybe. In the entire Norse Corpus. So, may definitely maybe. Definitely maybe, I like that. Oh my gosh. It is a hammer made of deer. Perfect. Let, let me go hit something with it. I must show off its power. Also, there's a bunch of copper here and a bunch of coal there. Who just yelled at me? <laughs> I think there's something to hit this way. I do have one more question. Yes. While you look for something to hit. Uh, and it's about our good friend Tim Borns. Yes. We love him. written some eco-criticism, which we love to see. Yes. About how the Norse sagas challenge binaries like human versus animal or wild versus domestic. Uh, do you think we see anything resonant in Valheim about challenging those binaries? Uh, so, firstly, I do actually disagree with Tim uh, on one important note. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, while I think the sagas do challenge those binaries... I think they do it almost accidentally because Norse people desperately, desperately want there to be a neat binary. Right. Right, like, their whole thing is, like, you know, there is a neat binary, right? the gods versus the Yetnar. 
And there is a neat binary, right? It's settlers versus Iceland, or versus the Icelandic landscape, or the brave P Christians versus Greenland. Just all of Greenland. And so the literature, right, those moments where it comes through as this moment of tension uh, and of breaking down those binaries is, I think, a moment of acknowledging the thing that they really wish was true wasn't. Because, like, their lives would be so much easier if there was a neat binary. But in both Christian and non-Christian contexts, they're like, well, the theology doesn't actually work like that. Oh, perfect. There's something to hit. Uh, right? Because either the environment is part of divine creation. <laughs> Incredible. Come meet my blue friend. <laughs> that area of effect. Uh, That's interesting. You see that a lot too in uh, English sources. Yeah. Where they really want there to be a binary between essentially Earth and their souls. Yes. Uh, and Wait. they there just isn't, right? The Christian theology doesn't work like that. And honestly, the pre Christian theology did not appear to work like that either. Uh, oh, and so, right, there's all these moments of concession where they're like, well, these binaries don't actually work. So I think they love Valheim, because I think Valheim does the thing that they, like, wish it, that they wish they were able to do. Because I think in this game it is a pretty neat binary. You show up, you do a colonial, an environmental colonialism, and then your mission being done and your enemy is defeated, you leave. Right. Theoretically. And that is kind of consistent with what Jody Bird says about gaming and colonialism, where it's sort of like the game presents a world that works the way, you know, settler colonial logics wish they worked, wish the world worked. Exactly. And right. that is, you know, like you say, pretty much what we see here. Uh Pretty much. I think there will be mom I don't know, maybe later in the game there's moments that dispute that. But right, thus far I see a lot of... Where we have a thing, and... Then, uh... Right, we... Attempt to take care of it, uh... We attempt to destroy everything around us, and then we leave. Yeah. And that's... So this is the, the realization of... Exactly. What Viking culture was, would have really loved to have happen. Exactly. And I don't feel great about that. Uh, of all the interesting things that can be actualized uh, in games... I don't love that that's, that's the one that pretty consistently does. Right. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, games have... That's a much bigger problem. That's it not is. just a this game problem, then. It's not just a this genre problem. No. That's a, a big issue across... Oh, heck. I used the wood I didn't want to use. Um, but it's just, unfortunately, kind of a cross-gaming issue Yeah. with that. I guess, yeah, I've always wanted to see more... Right, even more something like Stardew Valley. That, ...that change after you leave them. Yeah. In some way that... It's almost like a, you know, a new level, a changed level, which you do see a lot in medieval lit. Perhaps because at that time, they were a little less confident about being able to simply clear and go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff in medieval lit that's very possible with that. Mm-hmm. Right, because it is, it does, 
they do care so much about right evolving landscapes, uh, and landscapes that do more than just like exist to be exploited. Mm -hmm. So, I agree with you, and I mean you certainly know that material better than I do, but. I think that would be a really interesting practical thing to get some folks on board to try and, like, experiment with. As to what games are really able to do. Because, right, I almost, like, think of something like Manifold Garden as, like, a game that's, like, an interesting comparison point. Because mm -hmm. that's a game that, like, it's a puzzle game, or a puzzle traversal game, based in non-Euclidean geometry. Ooh. Right, it is... I'm not familiar with it. It's really pretty and uh, real nauseating. <laughs> so, do it that way, you. Ow, oh, I am on fire. Uh, but yeah, it, it. It proves that, like, games are able to do these non representative geography or geometries really well. I'd like mm -hmm. to see that applied to more. Just yeah. across the board more. I would love to see, you know, rather than the open world conceit, um, I don't know, like a, take the open world but just fold it in on itself a few times. Yeah. And also don't make it like full of stuff to do, but rather stuff being done to you. Yes. I don't know how that, yeah. I don't know how that actually works, but um, there's a lot of smart people who, in the games industry, and I'm sure they can figure something out. <laughs> Hear that, games industry? We believe in you. I don't know that we actually believe in you, but we'll pretend we believe in you. <laughs> we believe that neat things are possible, and maybe, maybe the industry will do them at some point. Exactly. There is a there's a game coming out. I can't remember what it's called, which is unhelpful. YouTube text over screen. Um, where you proceed by essentially destroying the level around you. Ooh. Which is, on the one hand, kind of what we've been talking about, but it's also a little, a kind of interesting twist on a level being something you traverse and figure out, and more like you can destroy ceilings and floors either to your own detriment or to the detriment of your... Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to get what that game is called, but... I, I like... I'm looking forward to playing around with that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think as more folks have got to kind of start to head out from my chat, I think it is also mm -hmm. about time that we call the night here because otherwise I'm going to fall asleep on stream and we don't necessarily want that. No, it's not one of those... Not one of those dreams. Not one of those okay. dreams. We can sit inside our very rainy, but... Yeah. Actually, fairly cozy in here. It's true. Comfort five. To <laughs> crouch on top of a bed. Well, thank you. I, I can really actually get to it. sleep. Haha. <laughs> 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 There's actually a dedicated button, I think, to sitting down as well. Oh, really? Uh, I found it earlier. Unclaimed bed? Oh, I'll claim my bed. I found a hey. way to, to like sit down earlier. Let me hit... I don't know what button I hit, but it's one of them. <laughs> I think it's like H or J or something. It just sits down. Ooh. There we go. That was uh, Z for me. Interesting. Oh no. Hey, I can jump. You have the power of good runs. Excellent. Yeah, all right. There we go. All right. Well, thank you so much for telling us about Norse mythology, how this game does and does not reflect it. And no worries. Might know that uh, in the future, in game design. Uh, uh, no worries. I've, really had a uh, time. I, I've had a great time. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, and sure. I mean, I just, I really hope games continue to push those boundaries instead of getting comfortable with where things are at. Yeah. There's so much potential still. And so many other time periods that aren't the Viking Age TM. You know, with our famous um, resource used in the Viking Age, bronze. Of course. 
Yeah, not silver, not the medal of choice. Uh, bronze. For everything. Of course. Of you course. You have to rank your medals. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, well, thank you to those in Adam's chat. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out. To those in mine, thank you for chatting and lurking. Uh, also, my folks, if you haven't followed Serenelle, you should do that. There's going to be more interviews, and I know you all like this style of content, because you watch me. <laughs> <laughs> there will be more interviews. Stay tuned. Follow is much appreciated, and vice versa for mine. Perfect. In the meantime, have a good night. Yeah, you all have a good night. Uh, for my folks, I'll see you all on Sunday. Hopefully, you know, maybe some of Serenelle's folks, uh, if you want to join. I think we'll be doing Cult of the Lamb then. So, it'll be a cult. And uh, historical propaganda. Excellent. Yes. Until then, have a good night, everyone.